بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم في البداية طبعا بشكر الأستاذ دكتور مجدي شرقاوي for inviting me to his successful meeting every year and uh, I wish you the best honors دكتور مجدي and uh, in Shams University all uh, thank you Professor Majid for uh, this nice introduction and uh, in the next few minutes 20 minutes or so I'm going just to highlight uh, pulmonary hypertension in CKD. Dr. Hala. Uh, my talk will cover these points, definition, clinical classification of pulmonary hypertension, pathogenesis uh, of pulmonary hypertension in CKD, uh, pulmonary hypertension in hemodialysis, pulmonary hypertension among transplant patients, and how to diagnose pulmonary hypertension and uh, finish by treatment and take home message. Uh, by definition, pulmonary hypertension is defined as a mean uh, pulmonary hypertension artery pressure more than 25 millimeter mercury at rest or 30 millimeter mercury on moderate exercise. And these are the classification of pulmonary hypertension uh, uh, for the sake of the lecture, pulmonary hypertension is classified into four clinical groups. Pulmonary hyper artery, uh, hyper pulmonary arterial hypertension, which may be idiopathic, inherited or drug induced, or some pulmonary venoclusive disease, and pulmonary hypertension in your pore. The second group is pulmonary hypertension due to left uh, heart failure which may be due to left ventricular systolic dysfunction or left ventricular diastolic dysfunction or the common valvular disorder that we all know. The third group is pulmonary hypertension due to lung disease and or hypoxia. The fourth group is chronic thromboembolic pulmonary disease like recurrent showers of uh, from DVT or whatever. Okay, and the fifth one, is pulmonary hypertension with unclear multifactorial mechanism. Among these is chronic kidney disease or chronic renal failure with different stages either on or uh, without dialysis. Other disorder like hematologic disorder, systemic disorder like sarcoidosis, metabolic uh, disorders like glycogen surgery disease or tumoral obstruction. The pathogenesis of pulmonary hypertension among the chronic kidney disease is just still unclear, and many mechanisms can be involved in the pathogenesis of pulmonary hypertension in chronic kidney disease. For example, cardiac dysfunction and high cardiac output, uh, systolic and diastolic cardiac dysfunction in valvular diseases, or high ca cardiac output in anemia, fluid overload, or arteriovenous fistula may induce elevation of left arterial pressure and pulmonary venous pressure. Uh, uh, this is like group two, pulmonary hypertension. It's a balance between the vasoconstrictor and the vasodilator material, like, for example, the most uh, important vasodilator that we all know is nitric oxide, together with the vasoconstrictor material and angiotensin two in detailing one or thrombexane. The balance between these two, vasodilator and two, uh, and nitric oxide as a vasodilator is the, the, the one who just when will induce either improvement or induction of pulmonary hypertension. If the vasoconstrictor material will, then vasoconstriction will happen, and the end result is pulmonary arterial hypertension. In hemodialysis patients, the pulmonary hypertension prevalence and severity has been uh, reported in many cases. Uh, in patient with uh, uh, hemodialysis, which are much larger than those with peritoneal dialysis. Significant inflammatory response to non-biocompatible membrane, which may be one of the factors that induce pulmonary hypertension when compared to the biocompatible high flux dialyzer. Those with biocompatible, the prevalence of high, uh, pulmonary hypertension is much less compared to those with incompatible membrane. Again, microbubbles that originated from dialysis filters and tubules may also be trapped in the pulmonary circulation and induce pulmonary hypertension from by either septic or fibrin, uh, fibrin embolic thrombosis 
arterial venous fistula or dialysis cluster can also lead to pulmonary hypertension. Vascular calcification is one of the mechanisms that just have been just uh, proposed as a mechanism for induction of pulmonary hypertension. I'm going to show in the next few slides there is controversy uh, about this issue of vascular calcification. For example, this is one of these studies which was published earlier back in 1995 and shows the excess hormone in patient with chronic renal failure can induce pulmonary calcification, pulmonary hypertension, and right ventricular hypertrophy. And they propose that abnormality in the right ventricle function uh, not due to pulmonary hypertension, which develops secondary to pulmonary calcification, which develop only in dogs. This is an experimental uh, model with intact parathyroid gland. According to this observation, pulmonary arterial calcification can be prevented or can be just, I mean, ameliorated by parathyroidectomy. It is just one single study you cannot rely on, but at that time it was just opinion that pulmonary arterial calcification, calcification can induce pulmonary hypertension. However, a recent, not recent actually, it was in 2003, this is Egyptian study by Dr. Magdi Abdel Hamid, uh, it's just to Sultan that I think you know, you know him very well. And they studied the pulmonary hypertension among chronic hemodialysis patient with arterial venous fistula. And they proposed also, again, the same theme that pulmonary arterial calcification can induce and parathyroid hormone excess can induce pulmonary hypertension. But unfortunately, they found that there is no relation between the presence of this and severity of the pulmonary artery calcification and the pulmonary hypertension. Moreover, uh, this study does not support the role of secondary hyperparathyroidism uh, and subsequent pulmonary uh, arterial calcification as an etiology for pulmonary hypertension in patient with chronic renal failure. Uh, again, this study, I think, they, one of the studies that supported the, the uh, uh, pulmonary calcification in hemodialysis patient uh, correction in pulmonary artery pressure values, they concluded that uh, the, the data, their data suggests that pulmonary calcification expressed by lung uptake its radioactive material has no role again in the vasogenesis of pulmonary hypertension among pulmonary uh, hypertensive patients. Now we come to very important issues which is uh, arteriovenous fistula and patient with pulmonary hypertension. The arteriovenous fistula results in increased venous return with concomitant increase in the cardiac output, which proposed as a cause of pulmonary hypertension. However, studies on the role of the arterial venous fistula have provided conflicting issues among patients with chronic kidney disease, dialysis, and uh, their impact on pulmonary hypertension. Okay, maybe they propose that the compliant nature of the pulmonary artery pressure could, be, could just favor that the AV fistula may be uh, not the cause for uh, uh, pulmonary hypertension. And this study, uh, which was published earlier, 2009, and they studied the effect of arterial venous fistula on pulmonary artery pressure and cardiac output in patients with chronic renal failure. And their conclusion that uh, in patients with chronic renal failure who created fistula should be monitored earlier and during the first six months and after the six, uh, first six months for evidence of pulmonary hypertension among these patients, especially those patients with uh, abnormal vasculature like diabetic patients, for example, and hypertensive patients. Again, the prevalence of pulmonary hypertension in patients with chronic uh, kidney disease uh, with and without dialysis with fistula. They studied, this study concluded that the prevalence of pulmonary hypertension is higher among those patients with AV fistula on dialysis when compared to patients with AV fistula, not on dialysis. It seems that the dialysis itself, dialysis process with turbulence of blood flow and change the flow rate of the fistula, I think it doesn't have, it may have an impact on the uh, flow on the uh, pulmonary arterial pressure changes. This is another study, but also studied the relationship between arterial venous fistula blood flow rate and pulmonary artery pressure in hemodialysis patient, and the conclusion was no direct relation between the blood flow rate of the arterial venous fistula and the pulmonary artery pressure uh, and other factors. Maybe a role, 
may have another factors that may be involved in the process of arterial venous fistula. Again, sleep apnea is one of the causes may induce pulmonary hypertension, which is usually associated with volume overload and hypopharyngeal edema, associated with nocturnal hypoxia, sympathetic activation, edema level increase, and vasoconstriction of the blood vessels, including the pulmonary artery and the elevation of the pulmonary arterial pressure. Now I'm going just to move quickly through the pulmonary hypertension among the hemodialysis patient. Pulmonary uh, hypertension has been recognized more frequently in patients with end-stage renal disease, and it is a significant cause of cardiovascular morbidity and mortality rather than pulmonary arterial hypertension uh, uh, alone. The prevalence of pulmonary hypertension has been uh, studied in uh, this uh, study of which was published in 2003, and they found that the prevalence of pulmonary hypertension was almost 10 to 40 in patients with five, stage 5 chronic kidney disease, and uh, range from about 20 to 70 percent in patients with chronic hemodialysis, and only uh, the range from 0 to 42 in patients with uh, uh, peritoneal dialysis, which again nullify the role of, uh, may nullify the role of pulmonary hypertension in BD because the absence of the fistula. So in BD patients, I think other etiologists may be involved. Again, pulmonary hypertension in patients with chronic uh, kidney disease is invasive with hemodynamic etiology and the outcome. This, uh, study, this case study, which was published recently, it's, uh, I think it's a uh, review this pulmonary uh, I'm sorry, it's a study, pulmonary hypertension is an important prognostic comorbidity uh, among the chronic kidney disease patient, and that chronic kidney itself may have a role in the development of pulmonary hypertension vasculature in some patient. And uh, another uh, study uh, showed that uh, the pulmonary hypertension is highly prevalent in dialysis patient, about 47%, with 20% of this patient have echocardiographic evidence of more severe uh, pulmonary hypertension. Again, and this is, I'm just revising the previous study, that the Egyptian one, which showed there is no relation between pulmonary artery calcification, hyperparathyroidism, and the prevalence of pulmonary hypertension in hemodialysis patient. This is another study showed very clearly that pulmonary hypertension is an independent predictor of morbidity and mortality among the hemodialysis patient. And this, uh, uh, this graph showing that this the survival among the patient with uh, pulmonary hypertension and those with no pulmonary hypertension, you can see that the percentage of patients who are surviving are uh, much higher, around almost 90 percent, uh, when compared to those patients with pulmonary hypertension, either with or without dialysis. This is another study which were carried out in 90 patients who uh, prospectively, and, uh, prospectively followed. Uh, and they just uh, measured the pulmonary arterial pressure and they checked the evidence of mortality and morbidity in patients after 12 months. And they found that the prevalence of uh, I'm sorry, mortality uh, was much higher in patients with pulmonary hypertension when compared to those was uh, without pulmonary hypertension, I'm sorry. <coughs> and the mortality rate was almost 26% among the patients with pulmonary hypertension. Uh, this is just, I'm sorry, just I put it just in the last minute. Uh, this is uh, one of the Tanta uh, University studies which showed the prevalence of pulmonary arterial hypertension uh, in patients with arterial venous fistula ongoing hemodialysis. And uh, this is a paper of uh, Dr. Hana Aogda. Uh, she is a lecturer now of Nephrology Tanta University. This study was uh, back in 2014. And it showed very clearly that I think we're the same theme. Only 29% of patients with pulmonary with the chronic uh, dialysis among the 55 patients only 20, almost 30% of patients developed the pulmonary hypertension. All of them were having the fistula. So just, uh, it's only 29 among all fistula patients. So fistula itself is not the mere or the, uh, the sole factor for development of pulmonary hypertension. I think another factors. 
And Hannah mentioned here that the low hemoglobin, the volume overload, and high cardiac output may be involved in the mastogenesis of pulmonary hypertension. And there is no direct relationship between blood flow rate of arteriovenous fistula and systolic pulmonary arterial pressure. Again, uh, just pulmonary hypertension among transplant patients, does it have impact on the uh, prognosis of the pulmonary hypertension? <coughs> there is there are no much data about uh, pulmonary hypertension and pulmonary hypertension. And this study, which was published in 2008, found that the patient with severe pulmonary hypertension had significantly higher risk for this early after with lower pulmonary artery pressure in this retrospective analysis, which includes 215 patients in dialysis who had in this stage uh, uh, before renal transplantation. Uh, again, another study just studied the, uh, studied that the pulmonary hypertension may be associated with decreased survival after a tra transplantation, and they concluded that the incidence of delayed or slow graft function also was found to be significantly higher and related to the patient with pre-transplant pulmonary hypertension, supporting the hypothesis that the pre-transplant pulmonary hypertension could represent an independent predictor for early graft dysfunction. Uh, how to diagnose pulmonary hypertension? I'm just to go, to go very quickly for the sake of the time. We just rely on the symptoms of pulmonary hypertension, including dizziness, cold dizziness, fatigue, and the specific nature uh, of the uh, complaint, complaint can lead to delay diagnosis. You know, we just, it's just complaint, vague complaint, so we may take it uh, less seriously. And these are the signs and symptoms. I'm not going just to, uh, just to go through you all know about it. And the ECG with, uh, with heart rate is with, uh, some tachycardia, with right axis deviation, and ST depression in uh, almost all leads. All right, leads. And this is a brain X ray. It may show that it's a peripheral uh, hypervascularity of <coughs> prominent pulmonary artery. And this is decreased the retrospir retro uh, sternal airspace. Uh, in patient with pulmonary hypertension, and right ventricular and right side pasteurization also may help. And I think this is the only method to diagnose pulmonary hypertension. Uh, and this is some vasodilator test is like inhaled with a nitric oxide, intravenous ibuprofenol, and intravenous adenosine. It may induce reduction of the mean arterial pressure without decrease in the cardiac uh, output. And these are other tests like uh, pulmonary function test, ventilation, perfusion, perfusion, or VQ scan, chest X-ray, MR. All of these tests can help in diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension. And, for example, some serology like uh, rheumatologic changes, hepatic, and may have be, be liver also changes. And how to treat pulmonary hypertension among our I think it is the same treatment like a general population, but we just specify some points in patient with renal failure. Uh, this is uh, the main lines, general measures, and vasodilator drugs and surgery. General measures like diuretics, low, low salt diet, venous uh, oxygen supplementation, digoxin may help in some instances, uh, anticoagulation and immunization against pneumococcal vaccine. Uh, vasodilator drugs like calcium channel, prostaglandin, or prostacyclic and uh, cyclic analog in the failing receptor antagonist and the uh, uh, Phosphodiesterase uh, 5 uh, antagonists, and one of these is Sildenafil, as you know. And the surgery uh, role in the patient with pulmonary hypertension, like uh, atrial septectomy and uh, lung transplantation. Very briefly, I'm just going to leave this, this, this uh, uh, table for you, but the last one is Sildenafil. Uh, and other phosphodiesterase and hematopathy given oral, it has a very uh, significant impact in the management of pulmonary hypertension in general population and the patient with chronic kidney disease. Uh, management of pulmonary hypertension, there is no specific uh, treatment uh, uh, intervention trial aimed at reducing the pulmonary hypertension in patients with uh, chronic kidney disease has been performed. And correcting the volume overload, general measures that we know in practice and anemia management, treatment of left ventricular disorders may be important factor for relieving pulmonary hypertension in patients with 
chronic kidney disease. Reducing uh, the arterial uh, uh, AV fistula size doesn't have impact, it may have, and this is one of the studies has shown that the pulmonary hypertension uh, uh, after ligation of the brachycephalic arterial venous fistula, it improved significantly the pulmonary hypertension. May have only two slides, only two slides left. And again, uh, if uh, just this uh, one of the methods for management of patient with uh, uh, pulmonary hypertension among the uh, hemodialysis, maybe uh, pulmonary hypertension can be reversed after transplant. And this study showed that it may happen. Again, another study also showed that the pulmonary hypertension in patient who's in this stage can improve after uh, uh, transplantation. And the kaplan meyer curve analysis according to uh, values showed that the patient who done transplant, it will improve. This is, I think, again, it is different from the other theme that the pulmonary artery pressure before transplant has bad outcome of the transplant itself. So the treatment even is conflicting among those patients. So uh, again, it is may change the mode of dialysis if the patient has pulmonary hypertension due to uh, hemodialysis or may shift to a peritoneal dialysis, although peritoneal dialysis itself may have pulmonary hypertension. Again, uh, pulmonary hypertension in hemodialysis patients, there are limited data uh, on drug therapy in uh, uh, pulmonary hypertension in remic patients. However, this study, which was a little bit older, but showed that Robin et al. reported that uh, with bosentan, uh, it's one of the endothelin uh, one antagonist, uh, had significant reviews pulmonary hypertension in 19 years old woman with end stage renal disease. Uh, my take home message, Mr. Chairman and gentlemen, pulmonary hypertension is prevalent in uh, patients with chronic kidney disease, particularly in hemodialysis patients. And pulmonary hypertension is in chronic kidney disease. The pathogenesis, as I mentioned, is multifactorial and is too much controversial. And the role of the AV fistula in pathogenesis of pulmonary hypertension is still controversial. And pulmonary hypertension has been associated with a risk of mortality and morbidity among chronic kidney disease and hemodialysis patients. Pulmonary hypertension and chronic kidney disease is a potentially reversible process that may progress after transplant, although the data are not, not supporting. And this uh, diagram, I'm going to leave it to you to show the pathogenesis just very briefly. Uh, and patient with chronic kidney disease. I'm not going to highlight it again because I mentioned in detail earlier. And um, before I finish, just I'm going to announce that our annual meeting will be done, will be carried out uh, this year uh, on from 6 to uh, 9 of November. Two days workshop at Tanta University and uh, 8 and 9th uh, will have scientific session in Alexandria uh, as well hotel. And Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Kashan. Any questions or comments?